beyond the wall. The market square was busy and bustling. Sarah and Jamie squeezed their way through the crowded aisles between the colourful stalls. Jamie fought his way through the throng to a stall selling books and comics, while Sarah, following close behind, was more interested in the pottery and trinkets on another stall. A large earthenware pot caught her eye. It had a handle on each side and was decorated with an intriguing hand-painted zigzag pattern. She picked it up and looked at it more closely. The stall holder, a Spanish woman with huge gold earrings and a mass of curly black hair, saw her looking at the pot. You know, when Spain was a Roman province, pots like that were exported all across the empire. They were greatly prized. Really? Hey, Jamie, come and have a look at this. What is it? A pot? What's so special about it? It's a Roman pot. Nice pattern. <gasps> what was that? Felt a bit like an electric shock or something. Well, do you want it or not? Don't just stand there touching it. You put it down if you're not going to buy it. Where did the nice lady go? Well, there are no ladies here. Not since my miserable hag of a wife walked out on me. I wonder why she did that. Hey, speak up. Uh, nothing. Sarah, what's happened? Where have all the stalls got to? I don't know. It's all changed suddenly. That store I was just looking at, the one with all the comics, it's disappeared. What about the buildings? There were really nice houses before. Now they're all small and tatty. Look up there, up that street. A huge gateway. That wasn't there before either. It's a fort. See those soldiers in tunics and helmets? They look like... Romans! Sorry to bother you, but my daughters were wondering where you're from. You look so different. Um, we're travellers from the south. The south is a big place. Are you from Eberarkum or Mamukium? Or maybe even further away, like Perilamium or Glevum? Yes, that's it. Oh, right! Oh, I say! Watch where you're going! What's going on here, Olivia? Oh, Marcus, just a boy not looking where he was going. Ah, uh, you get some rough types round here these days. Mm. Who are these two? Uh, they've come up from the south. The south? Everywhere south of this damnable outpost. Oh, did you know my purse is missing? Your purse? It'll be that boy. You, soldier, here! Commander, a pickpocket just ducked down that alley. Young, rough-looking type. Go after him and bring him back here. Yes, sir. And it's my guess you two are part of the scam. You distract people's attention while he sneaks up and robs them. Am I right? No! What? We've never seen that boy before. I don't think these children had anything to do with it, dear. It was I who approached them, not the other way around. You're too gullible, Livia. Why do you think they're dressed so oddly? Uh, to well, attract people's attention, of course. They wanted you to approach them. Come on, you little ruffian. Come on. Ah, well done. So, this is the little ruffian, is it? We know this one of old Sir Petty Criminal name of Sulla. Search him. Yes, sir. Aha! Not one purse, but several. And jewels, too. Expensive looking stuff. Right. Put him in the cells. Cell six, I think. The one with the rats. He needs to be taught a lesson. Uh, we put him in there the last three times, sir. He doesn't seem to have learnt much so far. Oh, I'll throw him in there anyway. I'll decide what to do with him later. And his two accomplices can go in there with him. But we had nothing to do with this. We've only just arrived in this place. We've never seen him before. We don't even know where we are. I find that hard to believe. This is Vercovicium, one of the largest forts on the wall. The wall? You mean Hadrian's Wall? What other walls are there? Take them away. Right, come on, you lot. Oh, here, there's a great one in China. Oh, now, 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 let's see your cheek. Come on. In you go. Oh. Jamie, I think they were right about the rats. Oh, shoot, scrap, go on. Yeah, that's got rid of them. Yeah, but how are we going to stop them come back in through the same hole? I got just the thing. This American comic I got at the market store, I can stuff it in the hole like this. Uh. Uh. Brilliant, Jamie. Now what do we do? Don't know. Do you think they'll bring us any food? 
No. Oh, oh, sorry. I didn't see you there. It's so dark in here. Uh, will they give us some blankets? No. Oh. Why don't you tell us a bit about yourself? Why should I? It's your fault we're in here, and we might as well do something to pass the time. I'm an orphan. Can't remember my parents. Always had to look after myself. Surely someone must have looked after you when you were little. Can't remember. Never had a home. No money, no food, unless I steal it. There must be something you could do. Like what? This country's falling apart. There's no future out there for the likes of me. Well, there's not much future in here. Yeah, well, I'm not planning on staying here long. I'm getting out of here before they whip me raw. There's just one problem. The door's locked, or hadn't you noticed? I won't be using the door. I've been digging my way out. Each time they put me in here, I do a bit more digging. What with? This knife. I keep it in my sandal. <coughs> See? You want any help? No. I've started. So you'll finish. Exactly. the soldiers when they realise he's gone if you want. You've got a point there. All right, I'm coming too. <sighs> so this is Hadrian's Wall. It's pretty impressive. Hmm. It's crumbling away. The whole empire's crumbling. The Romans are under attack on all sides. Barbarians everywhere. I give them ten years, then there won't be a Roman eagle left in Britain. And we'll all be at the mercy of the barbarians. Sounds grim. What are we supposed to do now? Hang around here all day? We'll have to wait till it gets dark. We don't want to be seen, do we? We can hide behind these bushes. Oh, hungry was by the sound of it. Shh, it's something else. Voices. Barbarians, pigs, are heading for the fort and looking for a fight. There are children in the fort. They can't defend themselves. They'll all get killed. Not our problem. If that's the way you feel, you go on. We're going back to warn them. Come on, Jamie. You coming with me or what? I can't leave her to go back on her own. Suit yourself. Anything could happen to her. You sure you won't come? That's the daftest thing I've ever heard of. Going back after we've escaped? But I suppose if the Romans don't get you, the Picts will. You need my help, so I'd better come. There's no point going back into the cell. What if the door's still locked? It won't be. They'll have discovered we've gone by now, and they don't bother locking the doors of empty cells. They might have put the stone back. Then we will be in trouble. We'd better give it a go. We've got to warn those people. It's all right. The stone hasn't been moved. Good job too. Ugh, I don't fancy crawling out of this hole backwards. <clears throat> Good. The door is open. Just like you said. There must be some guards in the place, surely. Leave them to me. I do hope he isn't going to do anything silly. Huh? <coughs> what was that? They were too busy playing dice to notice me. You haven't killed them, have you? No, they'll be all right. I just cracked their heads together from behind. Do you know where the commander's house is? Of course. I've been inside this fort more times than you could count. 
But why do you want to know where his house is? We met his wife, remember? She'll know what to do. Well, all right. But I'll have to go really carefully so nobody sees us. Terrifying apparition appeared at the room's only window. A blue painted face with spiky hair and a long drooping moustache. Blood dripped from the picked sword as he swung it in the air. Sulla leapt at a rack of spears on the wall, snatched one and rushed at the picked. He cracked him on the side of the head with a shaft. The man staggered, but he was a warrior and made a quick recovery. He knocked Sulla flying and lunged at him with his sword. The blade would have driven clean through the boy, but Sarah had grabbed a spear of her own and now brought the shaft hard down on the back of the picked legs. He buckled and fell to the ground. Sulla leapt to his feet. Sarah covered her eyes and Sulla struck home with his spear. One down, but not the only one. Great, another one. No, this one's mine. Whoa. He fell back out of the window. Shame. There's another one. Quick, you look going to the back room. I'll mind the window. Yeah. Come on, Mrs. Call me Livia. Oh, we better go in the other room. Bring your tooth and go. Yes. I'll guard the door with this spear. Oh, dear. I do hope Marcus will be all right out there. Where are they? It's the commander. What have you done to them? They're safe. Livia. Oh, Marcus. <sighs> you must thank this boy. He saved our lives by defending us from the Picts. Yes, he killed quite a few of them. Look. <sighs> Young man, you have done me a great service. You have saved my wife and children. How can I reward you? You won't want to reward me when you recognise me. I've never seen you before in my life. Ever thought of joining the army, lad? We could use men with your fighting skills. The army wouldn't take the likes of me. Don't you believe it. If you're prepared to sign on for the minimum 25 years' service, I'll draw up the papers personally. 25 years in the army? They call that a reward? I suppose I could do worse. They say the food's not bad. And there's regular wages, a bed to sleep in, foreign travel, and lots of fighting if you're lucky. Obviously right up your street. You're on. I'll do it. Marvellous. I'll get the papers now. And you two, I must give you something. Ah, how about this pot? It was imported from Spain. Please accept it with my undying gratitude for saving our lives. Ah, oh, it's exactly like the one I saw in the market. The market, dear? Yes, in Spain. Look, Jamie. You're right. It's got exactly the same zigzag pattern on it. It even feels the same. There's that funny feeling again. We're back in that market, in Spain. I'm glad you like it. Carry it carefully. I must have just bought it. Come on, Jamie, before she changes her mind. You can carry it. I'm never going to touch it again. I don't fancy ending up in the Roman army for 25 years. Oh, come on, it'll be all right. <laughs> the music in Beyond the Wall is taken from Alzul's Black Zarathustra by Richard Strauss. In the exciting opening bars, the trumpets play a three-note rising melody. The orchestra replies powerfully, and then the timpani pound out a tune of their own. Finally, the music swells into an uplifting climax.
the double basses and cellos begin a gloomy tune. Stormy music follows, with important parts for the violins and trumpets. Now we hear a soaring violin tune, which rises higher and higher, accompanied by glissandos on the harps. A strange twisting melody, played by the oboe, is taken up by a solo violin. The slow, quiet melody that begins the next section lies low down on the cellos and double basses. The trombones play a variation of the opening trumpet tune. Finally, the brass section booms out the trumpet melody over a chord played by the full orchestra. After a long section of high scampering woodwind and violin music, we hear a Viennese waltz played by the violin. These are just some of the highlights of Alzo's Brach Zarathustra by Richard Strauss. You're bound to discover more every time you listen. <laughs>